Mopork here, welcoming you to the first boss of Datascape, the System Daemons. The Firewall, the Guild Killers, the Gatekeepers, these are some of the names that have been given to this encounter. Some of the ultimate tests of coordination for progressing guilds takes place in this one boss. There are a lot of things to cover, so let's get started. Intruders detected. Obliterate intruders. Protect project. At the beginning of the encounter, the daemons will activate the teleporters you see on the sides of the room. Once a player uses the teleporter, that player receives a debuff that does not allow them to use the teleporter again for 15 seconds. Add waves will be summoned downstairs that will slowly creep to the end of the hall towards the firewall. Once they reach the end, they will channel power to the firewall, increasing the meter to 100%. If this happens, all adds in the room and any further summoned adds will be completely invulnerable and be teleported upstairs to the main encounter. This is your enrage mechanic. The daemons will frequently cast Data Drain. These square telegraphs target multiple random players that are upstairs and do high damage. Another ability that will often be cast is Purge. This will track three players upstairs and do very high damage after a couple seconds. Any other players that are hit by a Purge will have the Purge telegraph spread to them as well. It's very important not to spread this attack around. Power Surge will also be cast fairly frequently. This channeled attack does massive AoE damage over a 3 second period. If a full Power Surge is allowed to finish, it will increase the Firewall's power by 10%. When Power Surge is interrupted, it will place a stacking debuff on the interrupter called Overload. Overload places a dot on the target and ticks for high damage over time. Additionally, it will reduce threat by 10% per stack, as well as increase damage taken by 10% per stack. This debuff lasts 1 minute or until the player goes downstairs. Occasionally, a daemon will cast Disconnect on its primary target. After 4 seconds, that player is teleported downstairs. Afterwards, the daemon will cast Memory Wipe. After 4 seconds, the daemon will do a complete threat wipe. Another tank must make it to the daemon and taunt before the Memory Wipe finishes and goes on Rampage. The daemons will alternate sides for each disconnect. If the daemon's HP are more than 5% apart from each other, they will enter a System Restore. The lower HP daemon will heal up a bit, while the other one will constantly cast Purge until the System Restore is finished. The two daemons have a buff called Sinking. When the daemons get too close to each other, they pulse for raid-wide damage that will wipe the raid. The distance threshold is roughly indicated by the black ring on the floor in the center of the room. At 70%, the daemons will move towards the center of the room and summon enhancement modules in this phase. These modules will draw a line to the daemon and grant a significant stacking buff to the daemon. The north daemon will receive a mitigation buff, while the south daemon will receive a damage buff. The module will also rotate slowly with a laser, dealing high damage per tick. After an enhancement module is destroyed, it will melt down, causing an explosion that will deal massive damage to those standing inside. The meltdown will remove 5 stacks of the buff that the daemon has, however, it will only remove the stacks if at the correct module indicated by the line. The module's spawn points and buff targets are the same pattern every time. The next pair of enhancement modules will only spawn once both modules have been destroyed. There will be a total of 3 pairs of modules in this first pillar phase. Afterwards, the fight continues as normal, and the next pillar phase begins at 30%. This pillar phase follows the same rules as the first, with slight differences. The pillars are generally closer together than they were in the first, so boss positioning needs more finesse, and there are a total of 4 sets of modules in this phase. After the second pillar phase, the fight continues as normal with one exception. The daemons will gain the ability Upload and Download. A ring will quickly contract or expand depending on which ability the daemon has and deal very high damage and knocking the player towards more potential ticks of the ability. You will want to bring 3 tanks, 3-4 three to four healers, and a balanced DPS composition. There are many ways to handle this encounter, but I'll highlight this strategy as to what I believe is the easiest and most efficient for progressing guilds. Adjustments can be made depending on what you need for the raid. You will want to establish a control group. The primary role of this group is to go downstairs and handle the triple adds by pulling the far mobs away towards the center in order to make a clean stack. This group will go downstairs roughly 5 seconds before each ad wave. The control group should be coming back upstairs once the adds are finished or before 20 seconds by the next wave. This group will be composed of anywhere from 3 to 5 people depending on your raid's needs. The rest of the main DPS will be going downstairs roughly 3 seconds after the first probe spawns. The idea behind it is so that by the time the DPS arrive, the second probe will be spawning and everything will get cleaved with optimal uptime. The DPS group should stay downstairs until the third probe is finished. The first probe spawns 10 seconds after the wave, with 10 seconds in between each further probe. You will want to dedicate full-time interrupters on the boss. 
The primary role of these players is to very quickly interrupt every power search that goes off. Once raid timings are learned and established, it is generally the boss kickers that have the highest risk of dying. Warriors generally handle this role the easiest. Also, if your healers are good and geared enough, healers can also handle kicks. Kickers want to wipe their stacks before pushing into each pillar phase or they will risk getting one-shotted by purge, especially by the south daemon's increased damage. A healer can take over interrupts until the kicker comes back upstairs. Another role for the interrupters is to nudge the boss HP as close as possible to the next pillar phase in order to create an ideal push timing. Since the first disconnect is random, the tank that initially goes down with the control group at the start of the encounter must make sure he comes back upstairs at least 5 seconds before the disconnect happens, giving him enough time to run across the room should the disconnect happen on the opposite side. Afterwards it's smooth sailing as the disconnected tank will come back upstairs on the opposite side of the room every time. The first two ad waves are triple ads, and the next wave is the mini boss. Afterwards it will alternate between triple ads and mini bosses. The first mini boss is random between two legs and four legs, and then alternates between the two for each mini boss phase. Two legs will summon a probe laser that fixates to the primary target, which should be the tank. It will also occasionally cast a tractor beam that will target and follow one player. This player must kite it away from the group. Anyone hit by the beam will prevent that player from using the teleporter again by refreshing the teleportation debuff timer. The four leg mini boss will have two casts that each have four interrupt armor. An easy way to work with interrupting adds downstairs is to assign 2-3 to three groups or have players throw one interrupt on everything. Make sure to loosely spread for the 4 legs because the stun it cast is AoE and will transport players back upstairs if the cast is finished. There are 50 seconds in between each ad wave and 60 seconds in between each disconnect. Once the pillar phase is pushed, all the current downstairs and disconnect timers will cancel and the next disconnect will happen in 87 seconds, while the next add wave will spawn after 95 seconds when going into the phase. The daemons must be dragged to the correct enhancement module without them getting too close to each other. It's very important that each purge in this phase gets taunted for the damage reduction. Purge will be the primary cause of death, especially in the pillar phase due to more player density. It's important that only the tanks, tank healers, and the respective kickers follow the boss, while everyone else focuses on pillars only and stay to the respective portions of the map. The faster the pillar goes down, the easier the fight becomes by allowing a smoother transition for the second pillar phase. Many progressing guilds will struggle on the second pillar phase due to the fourth sets of pillars, making it very important for your DPS to quickly be handling each pillar. In order to make the daemon movement easier in that phase, the north daemon has the option of skipping the second pillar, while the south daemon continues to drag to the appropriate module. The south daemon is handled correctly due to the damage buff stacks being very dangerous if they get too high. At the end of the second pillar phase, the south daemon and the north daemon positions swap due to their positioning of their pillars. It's recommended that you keep the daemons to their new sides to limit the amount of movement going on. It's important to note that after a pillar phase, the second wave will spawn 5 seconds before the next disconnect. It's important that your control group tank does not go downstairs again during this time so it can pick up the boss after the disconnect. Your control group should be downstairs as soon as the disconnect happens, where the adds will have traveled about halfway to the firewall and need to be picked up quickly. Once all the motions have been learned and are being executed properly, the success of this encounter largely depends on handling purge correctly, especially during pillar phases. This will be your primary causes of death when this attack is being spread around. The other factor for success are the boss kickers. They need to be very wary of positioning, not just for purge, but also for the tank healer. They need to be making sure that they are taking as little extra damage as possible due to the increased damage they are receiving. Warriors with a hybrid LAS and amp setup built somewhat into defense can help tremendously. System restorers also have the ability to make pillar phases very ugly, not only in the amount of purges casted, but also with movement. The bosses will not move when system restore is happening, so that may be the difference between a daemon getting its buff purged by a meltdown, or slow the phase down long enough to make a disconnect happen during the pillar phase. On the final stretch after the second pillar phase, you have the option of simply burning down the bosses and beating the enraged, depending on the level of your raid's DPS. However, I would recommend more for continuing the motions as normal and adapt from there. 